have. Those two things will start to work together to create that biomechanical output. The other interesting thing too, like using the example of say a field sport, there is so much uncertainty in terms of what's going to happen. Yeah. So you actually need a level of complexity and variability in movement. Yeah. Because the reality is if you go to change direction, it's going to be different every time based on the parameters you're Yeah, ground you're surface, angles, temperature. Yeah. The, whether it's wet or not, yeah. where the opponents are located, the speed at which you, you reach that at, point. Yeah, fatigue. And interestingly enough too, when we think about particularly motor learning, external cueing is shown to increase what they call entropy, i.e. less predictability or more variability in mm. movement, which I think a lot of the time people will go, but do, do we want that? Do we want more variability? And the reality is in very complex environments where there is uncertainty, the reality you do. Mm. You don't want this idea of almost like robotic maneuvers. Yeah, this perfect execution of some sort of motor skill. Absolutely. Maybe you do in, like, you think that you want more of that in, say, sprinting, because there's actually more. Yeah, look, you control. shift, I think you shift more towards that, but you do still want the capability of having variable performance. Mm. You know, you want the ability, if it's a headwind versus a tailwind versus cold whatever it is they need to be able to carry it out in a way that's effective and for events that have say tactical you know input mm. can you change pace can you not change pace mm. all of these kind of things are really important and so you need to have some level of variability in what your skill set has so that you can carry out that level of variability when the opportunity presents that also makes a lot of sense to me to seem thinking about this now of just from an injury prevention standpoint because even if you're in a more constrained environment where the task is very repetitive, mm. just because of the fact that we see variation in the sensory motor system based on many things, if there is a change in the system that if you're then trying to complete a task in a very specific controlled manner that you're unable to because you feel a little bit stiff because you did a heavy resistance training session yeah, a few days I, ago, do you actually increase your susceptibility because you haven't been able to And adapt? I think this is the discussion, remember, we had around flexibility and we said the reason that range of motion and flexibility is potentially valuable as a mechanism for reducing injury, there's obviously lots and, you know, we kind of alluded to some of them, but is that it gives you more degrees of freedom mm. in a, a variable situation. Yes, and that may not always be evident in the macro biomechanics because you might yeah. see like but they're getting their knee to the same position and so on but when you look at the actual they have change their hip or ankle position or and even their what's torso, happening at yeah. the muscle tendon yes level yeah okay too. even if you go deeper yeah yeah absolutely because like when do soft tissue strains occur it's usually when the strain exceeds the capacity of the system hmm. and you know if you over strain a particular area of the muscle tendon unit that's not familiar with that's when you're likely to get failure of the system yeah so I think that's the other thing to consider too, because the reality is what's happening at the tissue level is also going to vary as 